Good day, saints. Can we bow our heads and pray for the word? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I need to give you honor and glory this day. This is the day that you've made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I need to pray that you anoint my lips. I need to pray that, Lord, as I minister the word of God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Today, I want us to talk under the topic, cast it, cast it. I want us to read in the book of Psalms 55, 22. Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous be moved. So today, I just want us to discuss briefly what is the meaning of cast. So the topic says, cast it. What is the meaning of cast? And what came to my mind was that there is a reason why there's a cast. There is a reason why it's not a giving. So when you are giving something, you give it with the intention that you can get it back. But when I give you something, when it's still in my hands, the pace in which I'm giving it is not the same as the pace of casting. So when I cast something, I am throwing it away. So when I cast something, I don't care of the damage of what it can happen when it is thrown away. So normally, if I can say, throw this thing in the bush, it will be very hard for you to locate that thing because it was thrown away. So throwing things away has to do with forgetting as well. So when you give, it's not easy that you can give and not forget. You can easily extract it back. But when you cast it away, it is thrown away where location is not known or cannot be accessible because you don't know when you cast it, where did it land? So that is the reason the word of God says, cast your burden. So today I want us to discuss this topic that is different, difficult to most of us maybe, and it is a process. It is easy to cast some of the things, but it's, it is difficult to cast some of the things. And in human nature, we are used to hold things. We are used to, to safety. We are used to security. And I want us to look into Maslow hierarchy of need. Why do we face challenges and what are the areas where we face challenges as human beings? So uh, Maslow has got five areas of the needs of a human being. Every human being has got these five areas. It can differ from us individually. And to others, it can be more need than the others. But there are three basic needs under the first hierarchy of, 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 of the need that he stipulated in his discovery. He realized that we all need physiological survival needs. And within the physiological survival needs, you need the air, you need the water, you need food. Those are the three basic needs of a human being. So once you take that away from us as human beings, we cannot survive. Whether you are an animal, any living thing needs this. So you need the A. So when I did my research, it stipulates that for you not to make it, if we withdraw A for three minutes, you won't survive after three minutes of not having the A, of not breathing. And if we remove water for three days, you may not survive after three days of not having water. If we remove food for three weeks up to three months, you may not survive not having that. Why? Because, because it's number one. It's a basic needs. So he further stipulate that the second needs is safety and security. It's safety and security. Those are the aspects that triggers challenges in our lives. We have challenges based on life, which is A. We all need to live. So challenges can be life-threatening, which requires A, which is a basic need. Challenges can be the need of supply, 
which is a basic need for every individual to, to, to survive in this world. We could have challenges. The second category is the safety and security. We all need to feel safe. We all need to have shelter. We all need to feel secured. We all need some form of protection. That's why in our houses we've got security guards. Some of, some of the people that live in an estate, they went there so that they can beef up security. Why? Because it is a need. They need to feel safe. And they had to have extra precaution to make sure that they are safe. People have got alarm system. People have got cameras. People have got beams. People have got walls all over the houses. They've got suspenses to try and cover this aspect of safety because it's a need. It's a human nature to want to feel safe. Even the thugs themselves, whether you are the thug, you break into people's home, you also have that need of feeling safe. That's when you realize when the alarm can, can kick in, they will run away. Why? Because they no longer feel safe. So that is a basic need of every individual. That is what causes challenges in our lives. And the other thing is love and belonging. So these are the other category under my slow hierarchy of needs that he stipulated that we all need to be loved. We all need to belong. And hence you'll find that we've got surnames. We have got locations. We are proud of our, of, 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 of our, of, of our background. We are proud of what where we come from and each and every one of us have got a surname in our id so that we can be identified we can belong i belong somewhere so to an extent whereby you need friendships outside of your immediate family you need friends to belong to a group of friends to belong to a support system it's a need so you can't live in isolation you live among people, hence you need people that you can associate with. You need people who can love you and you can love them back. That is another aspect. It's a need. And once all these needs are triggered, it becomes a burden. Because now a need has been taken away from me. And the other thing is esteem, our stature. So we need to have self-worth. So you need to have that important skill, appreciation, recognition, respect. So each and every one of us, whether people respect you or you are respectable or not, or you do things that makes you to not be to be respected, so you will always need some form of a respect to a certain level because you will feel no one wants to be undermined. Everyone feels important in their own right, in their own space. So that is a need. So the fifth one is self-actualization, which our, is, is our mental being, our emotional being, our physical being, our spiritual being. So these are the aspects that is a need that contribute to who we are. That forms part of the biggest challenges that we face in life. So each and every one of us, when you say you have got a challenge, is when a need is taken away from you. And those needs they fall under these five categories according to my slow hierarchy of needs. So it is a need that is taken away from you. So when that need is taken away from you, it becomes a burden. So because I'm supposed to be constituted of five needs that are supposed to be met, if one or two or three of those needs are taken away from me, I will have void or I will have pain or I can have a burden. Those are the things that God wants us to bring to him. And we don't bring it actually. According to Psalm 55, 22, it says that cast it. So why does it cast it? So from the basic needs, God said, the birds of the air, the birds of the field, they don't worry about what they need to eat, what they will wear. That is part of the first need that we need as a physiological survival need. We all need to have shelter. We need to have water. We need to have food to eat. Those are the basic needs that actually in this world is the is number one need that we need to worry about because it has to do with your survival. The other things, they are very much minor. They are lesser compared to this one, which is the top in the hierarchy. But then God is saying the one that is the top 
est in the hierarchy, the one that if you don't get, you die. He's saying that if the birds can worry about it and they still survive in the wilderness, they are still fed on a daily basis. They don't die because of hunger. They are fed. What about you as a human being who is created in his own image? So he's trying to say, cast. When you cast, even if you like it or not, can you go and locate something that you have cast? Let's say it's a bushing area. It's a bush. And you throw something there. It will be very hard for you to locate that something. It will be very difficult. So that's how God wants us to trust him with our burdens, with, with our problems. Why? So will worry add another day in your life? No. The Bible says it won't add another day. If you worry, can it change the situation by just worrying? By being depressed, can it change the situation? No. By worrying, can it change the situation? No. What changes the situation is when we change the way we think about the situation. When we change the way we perceive the situation and we begin to understand that if something is outside of my control, if I can control it, let me control it. But if something is outside of my control, let me cast it to him. What are the things that causes us not to be cast? Is the fear of the unknown. So most of us, we have lived in a world where we've been disappointed because we can't see God. We have never seen God. So we see people that are close to us that can easily disappoint us and we mistrust. And when we mistrust with the people that we can see, and people that sometimes we look up to and people that will think they need to give us the protection. They need to give us the love. They need to give us the belonging. They need to give us security. They need to give us shelter. They need to provide for us. They need to give us a whole lot of things. When that is jeopardized, what are the causes that even God that we can see, even if we have known that he's the creator of the heaven and the earth, even if he's the, we have known that he shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory, even if we have known that he can still provide for us, if he can provide for the birds, it's not difficult for him to provide for him for us even if we have known that there is nothing that is too hard for god why is it difficult that we can cast our burdens to him and those are the things that i want to list which is some of the things that has triggered that it is difficult for us to trust our maker because of the challenges that we've faced in life and some of these challenges they fall under the five maslow hierarchy of needs that have been tempered with so most people fear failure, rejection, and change. Those are the top three that I've listed. It can be many things. A lot of people fear to fail. So when I give my, when I cast this problem that I'm holding, that I think maybe I still have a plan, I can change the situation. Maybe if I can combine one, two, three, four. Maybe I can try to get away with this challenge. But then if I cast it, I don't have control over it. So it's the fear of the unknown. I fear that should I give it to the person that I can't see, which is God. And when I cast it, I can't take it back. When I cast it, it disappears. I don't have control over it. I fear rejection. I fear change. I fear the output that I don't know. Because once I control it, at least I can anticipate the output because I'm in charge of the situation. I'm in charge of the circumstance. I'm in charge of this burden. Because once it's out of my hands, I cannot control how the output will be. And these are the reasons why it is difficult. For many of us to cast the burden but today i want to encourage me and you today and say can we learn to cast our burden and see how it goes when it goes forth it says he will never permit the rushes to be moved 
he will never permit. He will never permit. He will never permit. Can you repeat that after me? He will never permit. So that is a guaranteed statement. The guaranteed statement says if you cast, if you, if you are bold enough to say that, Lord, I leave it into your hands and I, I, I put on a blind eye. I don't care what the results are. In this situation, I don't care what the results are, but at your word, O oh God, I will follow your steps and your statutes. At your word, O oh God, I will cast my burden. At your word, O oh God, I will cast my failures. At your word, O oh God, I will cast my rejection. At your word, O oh God, I will cast the fear of change. At your word, O oh God, I'm willing to sacrifice. At your word. Can we trust him today, hard as it is? Do you know that when we walk with God, it's a journey, it's a process. I'm also in a journey. I believe you should also be in a journey. You can never think you know all of God. We don't know all of him. We are forever discovering of, of, his, of his doing on a daily basis that is new every day. Every day. His messages are new every morning. They are new every morning. So when we still think we know him, and the moment we cast, we realize, oh, even this one the Lord can do. Even this one I thought he can do. I thought this one I can take charge of it myself. It looks too difficult, but the Bible says, what is it that is too hard for God? And you need to remember that casting the burden, it doesn't mean you control the outcome. It means that you accept the outcome and you, you, you trust upon his weight to know that everything was better for good to those who trust the Lord and those that are called according to, to his purpose. You trust upon the Lord with your burden. You trust upon the Lord with your situation. You trust upon the Lord with the outcome you trust upon the lord that whatever it is oh god i know that everything works better for good whatever it is oh god i know that your mercies i knew every morning whatever it is oh god your grace is sufficient for me in this situation i know i trust you whatever the outcome is lord I receive it. I trust you enough to understand that you will never leave me. You will never forsake me. You are there for me. In the morning, in the evening, he's still God. He doesn't change. The Bible says it's the same. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, he doesn't change. We are the ones that change, but God doesn't change. He can alter his word. He doesn't change. He is trustworthy. I want to lead somebody to Christ today who says, I'm tired of life. I've tried everything. I tried to cry to God. It looks like he's not there. And I'm here to say the first step is receive him as your Lord and Savior. And try to read the Bible and try to pray. Prayer is not noise. You can talk to God the way I'm talking right now. And God hears. He's not deaf. He hears and he sees your cry, but he wants your heart first. Can you follow me in this prayer, Lord Jesus? I am a sinner. Come into my heart. Forgive all my sins. Today I pronounce that you are the Lord. You are the Savior. I believe that you died and rose again on the third day. From today moving forward, I declare that I am your child I pronounce my evil ways and I declare that from today moving forward, I am your child. And today moving forward, you belong to the kingdom of God. And don't be afraid to talk to him about anything and every circumstance that you could be facing in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.